the DAR floor time model. The one pristinely beautiful place where you can mobilize the child's mind like you've never done before. An understanding of emotional connection, an understanding of contingent relationship, of a therapeutic alliance that is about a two-way street between therapist and child, supporting and coaching the parent and child to have that same interaction, taking the pain out of misunderstandings, taking the relationships that end up being in opposition with each other into a place of connection. In the trauma world, we talk about connection before correction. The DR4 time is just that. It reestablishes the beautiful place of what a parent and child relationship should be. It is the one program that I certainly never, ever want to be without. And for the parent, such a good place where they don't have to become a therapist, where they don't have to become a speech language pathologist, an OT, a physical therapist, an educator, where they don't have to be who they don't need to be, where they can simply be a parent that can harness joyful, related experiences between themselves and children, no matter the severity of the profile. So floor time, or DR floor time model was initiated by Dr. Stanley Greenspan and co-authored books with Dr. Serena Vider, The Child with Special Needs, and later the Engaging Autism book. And even though many families, parents, therapists would think that DR floor time is mainly for the autistic population, not quite true. When Greenspan started this model, it was for all children. It was definitely not something that was just meant for one population. Is it very helpful for the autistic population? Absolutely. But it's also, I use it for trauma all the time. I use it with ADHD. I use it with whatever diagnosis comes to the table because social emotional development is a is part of so many different diagnostic categories and profiles. So when he brought this model about, round about late 70s, of course he was working on it longer than then, but that's kind of when things started running for him in this model. He combined thoughts that came from Piaget, thoughts that came from Sigmund Freud, um, and got into this place that he called the D and the I and the R. D for developmental milestones, I for individual differences, and R for relationships. You can mobilize the child's relationships by using the developmental milestones through acknowledging and understanding their individual differences. So yes, it is a developmental approach, and that's really who I am. I only work through a developmental approach with children and families supporting them. Even when autistic adults come to me, I use a developmental approach. Where was the building blocks not in place in order to get to the places of being where we want to be now? There's a huge link between affect and learning. If I'm intrinsically motivated, I'm going to learn from you. If you are not interested in floor time, you will put off this video. We listen where our passions take us. And so intrinsically, if we can harness that type of motivation in children, we can make them much more available for learning. Or can we say, open their pathways of availability to learn from their environment? It, is, it includes all kinds of sensory pieces like visual, auditory, tactile, smell, taste, and it's about those shared experiences around the hierarchy of the building blocks of learning, supporting what should be naturally there for every child, the ability to be curious and act on that curiosity, explore the environment, solving problems, 
problem solving, imaginary thinking, visual thinking. They are a legion of abilities and skills that lies within the floor time reharm of work. Our major goals in DR floor time, engaging in warm, trusting relationships. I don't know about you, but I thrive on my friendship relationships, my husband relationship, most of all. I thrive on the fact that I can just put my feet up and just simply be. And that is what I want for the children. That is their right. They're supposed to be embracing the world, not running away from it. Floor time opens that door to be curious, to be creative, to, to, to learn a wider a range of feelings without feeling threatened that it's going to make you feel out of control. That perspective taking that we need on others, theory of mind, having an ability to, to attune to your mind without you even saying a word, having that cognitive flexibility to shift from my thoughts to yours. When we role play in floor time and I'm taking in the role of a pirate and I'm, I'm, I'm brandishing my sword, I'm showing you that sense of power and it can look so cute. But in that cuteness also lies the I can. I can have this power. When I don't have typical development, it often makes the child feel powerless, makes them feel like they cannot embolden themselves to this world. What floor time does in such a beautiful way is say to the child, but you can, because whoever you are is good enough for me. Whatever you bring to the table, it's cool. And I'm going to use what you got to the table. And we're going to take that one step further so that you have more to bring to the table. And yes, this is true for any age. The hour of floor time doesn't stop at the age of three, five, seven, or 90. It's for everyone. I always joke, I dare are my dog. And may I not say this too loudly, maybe I dare are my husband. <laughs> We, we use DIR in a way where others can feel on top of the world. If we have this type of a program for everybody coming out of utero, I would think just what a wonderful world we could have. A world where we are not tolerating each other, but understanding each other, embracing each other. That's what DIR brings. The empathy that you gain from becoming a social, emotional thinker who's able to problem solve. So as we said before, D is for development, and there are six levels, major levels that we work on. But Greenspan also had level seven, eight, and nine, um, and going beyond. And those are the ones that we keep developing throughout life our ability to maintain our own internal standard of our, our own thoughts, ideas, and opinions. But mostly the first six is what we really, really focus on when we have a child in an intervention program and that we use. And again, regardless of what the diagnostic condition or the age is, these levels we will assess and figure out on which level the constrictions lie um, that inhibits them to become the full place of being where they need to be. Then we also look at the individual differences. What do their profiles look like? What is the expressive language, the receptive language? What is their cognitive ability? What is their, what does their immune system look like? What is their medical situation? The asthma, the, the, the biological conditions that they bring to the table. But also, as an OT, very interested in their sensory profile. And also the sensory profile of the parent and the goodness of fit that comes between different family members' individual differences and how to make that goodness of fit in a place of where we can have joy and peace restored. So we want to look at the profile of each individual client. It's a truly individualistic approach to client therapy situation. And then it's all about the relationship. 
I used to think that I was a wonderful OT when I walked out of college and I could think of 10 activities to do in an hour session. And I could figure out what the short-term objectives are, the long-term objectives are, how it's supporting the profile. And if we can do so many repetitions and so much time, boy, I'm a good OT. I used to think I'm a really good OT when kids are in the waiting room and they see me come to get them and they, oh, Miss Moffat. I used to think that was what it was all about. That's wonderful. Come to think of it, yes, it's good, but that's feel good. What's really important is if the child embraces the relationship around the activity, the intrinsic motivation to do it myself grows in a much higher speed and place. I must retreat. The child must show up. I am the catalyst. The child needs to be able to work without me. Independence is what I want to go for, not dependence on my relationship with him or her. Relationship, it drives everything. And if you're looking at current trauma literature, Oh my goodness, how much of the literature is going around the contingency of an attuned relationship, a co-reciprocity that happens between parent and child, between peer and peer, between teacher and child, therapist and child. So we consider the D and the I to gain more participation and more intrinsic motivation to want to comply to somebody else's rules to shift from their own highway to somebody else's highway. It's all about a sense of self and developing yourself into an individuated self that will make you feel that I can apply myself even when I don't know the outcome, even when things are unpredictable. I can have a groundedness within myself that can trust that even when things don't work out, I will still be okay. This sense of self comes from an emotional place, a social place, a cognitive place. It's an increasingly complex piece. There, it is a, it grows through different life experiences. You know, most kids are, when they are not typically developing, are avoiding the very circumstances they need in order to grow. DR helps me to turn the key in their system towards learning again, away from avoidance, tackling things. I think about that little train that says, I think I can, I think I can, right? That's, that's the sense of self you want to create from young to older. So Greenspan wanted to, for, for parents to do seven to eight sessions a day of 20 minutes. What most of my families do is they do one session a day and we start with 20 minutes. And I also ask them the first time they do it, I say to them, play any game with your child. Don't think about Disney. Don't think about Legos, just whatever they want to play, even if it's basketball, but you're not allowed to talk. The child can talk, but you're not allowed to talk. They always look at me like, what? You know what? When you are nonverbal, you're connecting much more to the emotional place. Verbal often takes us away from the emotional connection. Think about it. So much more to say about that, but here we are. So, and then some of my families do monthly video reviews where they send me video from wherever they are, and then I edit them. Um, and my face comes up and I talk to them and I tell them what I see. Um, and then a lot of our families learn that it's not always about having a session, but actually using applied for time throughout the day where they can use it in the car, they can use it at the lunch table, the dinner table, while they're getting dressed, while they're doing bathtub time. It's, it's, an, it's a method that you can apply in quite a grand way. And what's the best piece of all of this is that when you have an OT doing floor time, a speech doing floor time, a PT doing floor time, an educator doing floor time, the child is finally getting a consistent message. Not with this one, the performance expectation is this. 
with that therapist, the performance expectation is this. And yeah, we know you're not able to integrate very well, but we're still going to expect you to go home and integrate all of that yourself. Not quite fair. So because any profession can learn the floor time model, it's a model of similar language, sameness. That speaks to our children. It speaks to predictability. It speaks to if everybody has the same kind of expectation, then finally I can find a place of rest and comfort and within which I can grow. Next session, I want to talk a little bit more about um, the different levels of the floor time model. I'll see you there.